Hello everyone, my name is Dion Schuddeboom and today we're going to be looking at the POCO X3 Pro. With a Snapdragon 860, 6GB of RAM, 128GB of upgradable storage and a 120Hz refresh rate display, for $200 this may just be the best value Android phone out right now. As always, I will leave all of the purchase links down in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. Looking at the back of the phone, you can see we have this two-tone, quite recognizable design. We have these matte finishes here on the outside, and then the inside features this glossy finish, uh, and also has a pretty large POCO branding. Now also, the back of the phone is made out of plastic, and this is something that you will feel and notice when you're picking up and using the phone. At the same time though, for $200, it is hard to complain too much about this. Also on the back, quite signature to Poco, we have this round camera unit with four lenses, and I'll get more into the cameras in a sec. All in all, I would say I quite like the design of the X3 Pro. It is definitely unique and stands out from the rest. Now, I especially like this subtle gradient that we get on the blue model, where it goes from this lighter blue to this darker blue. Now, of course, if you do want something that's a little bit more low key, you can always get the black model. Let me know in the comments, which color would you go for? Just like the back, the sides of the phone are also made of plastic. And on the left side, you will find the dual SIM slot, which will allow you to have up to two SIM cards or one SIM card and a micro SD card. And this will allow you to add up to one terabyte of additional built-in storage. Now, this is a feature that I always like to see and especially look for in phones of this price. And then on the right side, we have the volume buttons as well as the power button, which has a built-in fingerprint sensor. Now, in my testing, I found the fingerprint sensor to be quite reliable. I'd say it works anywhere from 90 to 95% of the time. On the top of the phone, we find a microphone as well as an IR blaster. Now, this is something that you don't really see too often these days, but can be useful on certain occasions as this will allow you to control your TV using just your phone. And lastly, on the bottom of the phone, we find the headphone jack, which is always great to see as this will allow you to use your standard wired headphones. And then next to that, we also have the USB-C port for charging. Now, USB-C is good because it is a very modern standard and will also allow you to use your pre-existing chargers. And finally, on the bottom, we have one of the two speaker units. And this speaker on the bottom actually combines with the earpiece speaker to give stereo sound. Now, this is especially good if, say, you're watching videos in landscape mode, as this will help create a slightly more immersive experience. While the speakers do get quite loud, there is not much depth to the sound, especially in the lows and highs, and there's also some distortion at max volume. And this brings us to the front of the phone. Now on the front, we'll find a 6.67 inch IPS LCD display. Now this is great for consuming content, but also does mean that for most of us, it will require two hands to properly reach all four corners of the display. Here we'll also find the punch hole camera, and this is good to see as this is a very minimally obtrusive way of having a front facing camera, only taking up very little bit of the display. Now the front facing speaker is actually built into the frame of the phone as well. I would say the LCD panel on the X3 Pro is quite good, although not as good as say the OLED panel found on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, which will have better dynamic range as well as color reproduction. That said, the X3 Pro does feature a 120 Hz adaptable refresh rate, and I'm a big fan of this feature. This means that scrolling in most apps, as well as system animations, are buttery smooth, and this makes the phone feel snappy and overall a joy to use. For an LCD display, I would say that the colors are reasonably vibrant. I did go into the settings and change to the saturated color profile to further improve this. After doing that, watching videos and playing games both look good. The display also gets plenty bright and can clearly be seen even in direct sunlight. One thing I was not too fond of is the color shift that occurs when slightly angling the phone from side to side. It's best to look at the screen head on. 
With all of that in mind, I would say that the display on the X3 Pro delivers in most areas and will be fine for most. Covering the screen, we have Gorilla Glass 6, and this will mean that we have reasonable scratch as well as crack resistance. Though I do still wish that the back of the phone was made of glass or aluminum. Now let's talk about the camera. Now for many budget oriented phones, this is the area where manufacturers tend to cut corners. So let's see how the X3 Pro holds up. The cameras on the X3 Pro are usable. But let's just say that the Pro in the Poco X3 Pro name does not apply to the cameras. Results can be a hit or miss. The 48 megapixel main wide angle camera can perform quite well. Color reproduction is reasonably accurate, dynamic range is decent and white balance in general is true to life. But in darker lighting, pictures quickly become noisy and start to lose detail. The ultra wide lens is fun to have, but lacks sharpness, especially around the edges of the frame. It is good enough for the occasional Instagram story, but not much more. Still, for $200, these cameras are by all means usable. But in a world where affordable phones are only getting better, this is an area where I was hoping for a bit more. When it comes to video, regardless of lighting conditions, video is jittery. Changes in exposure going from brighter to darker areas are not smooth and the electric image stabilization causes some visible morphing on screen. I understand that having four cameras does look more impressive on a spec sheet, but I would have preferred if Poco had just gotten one lens and made that one lens as good as possible. For example, what Google does with the Pixel 5a or Apple with the iPhone SE. As for the front camera, it's good enough for video calls, but out of the box, the beauty filters are very strong. Thankfully, these can be disabled. But how about the battery life? The Poco X3 Pro features a 5120 milliamp hour battery, which is quite big, even considering the larger display. In normal day-to-day -day use, I can get anywhere from five to six hours of screen time, which means I can get through most of the day of a single charge. It is also nice to see a fast 33 watt charger included in the box. This will allow you to charge the phone from zero to 100% in just one and a half hours. Now let's talk about performance, as this is one of the biggest strengths of the X3 Pro. The X3 Pro runs Android 11 with MIUI 12 on top. It has a Snapdragon 860, and this is a serious processor for a phone of this price. And it shows. With normal day-to-day -day productivity tasks and switching between apps, the phone keeps up well and rarely lags or stutters. Six gigabytes of RAM also help apps stay open long in the background. I'm not much of a mobile gamer, but in testing, the X3 Pro keeps up well, playing games at a smooth 60 FPS, which looks great. The phone also barely heats up and stays cool to the touch. So what's the verdict? Well, overall, I would say the Poco X3 Pro is a phone that impressed me. I would say its biggest selling feature has to be the performance. This is something that you do not only benefit from during more intense tasks like gaming or editing photos or video, but also during day-to-day -day use where it feels snappy and keeps up well. The display is good and the battery life is decent and will get you through most of the day. Camera is the one big area for improvement. This is definitely something to bear in mind if you plan to take a lot of photos and especially video. I look forward to seeing what the X4 Pro will have to offer, but in the meantime, for $200, the X3 Pro does offer a lot of value that is hard to beat at this price. Hope that can help you out with your buying decision. As always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. I've also done a full unboxing video of the X3 Pro, which I will leave linked on screen right now, as well as my review of the Tranya T10 wireless earbuds. These, in my opinion, are among some of the best value wireless earbuds that you can find. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and take care.